Welcome back, I am John P. Today we are going to be talking about Gerald Genta watches and why you should put one of these watches in your collection now or never. What I mean by this is in the last five years especially, but also the last year increasingly, Gerald Genta watches have really both climbed in desirability as well as price. So what I want to do is I want to talk about the Gerald Genta watches, a little bit about what makes Gerald Genta, um, <clears throat> now the late Gerald Genta, so special, as well as some of the contributions that he's made to horology. He has done so many interesting and great things, and also, he probably designed the watch that you consider to be your grail watch. So please make sure to stay through talking a little bit about the history of the watch is what makes it so special, as well as where I think the market will go for these watches. As you know, I'm a watch dealer with Delray watch.com so i always like to put in that kind of perspective i know so many of you out there also have an interest in i hate to say it but i will say it investing or at least playing around a little bit and having fun and trying to find out the next big thing and i think gerald Junto watches are a brand and almost a category if you consider the, all the brands he's designed for um it's definitely one to look out for. Also, please do not forget to check out my Instagram, The Real John P, where you can see a very special Gerald Genta Mickey Mouse golf watch. Yes, a Mickey Mouse golf watch, which has become very desirable, rare, and collectible. See it on my Instagram, The Real John P. And uh, before I forget, on the wrist today, Royce, uh, Rolex, what am I saying, Royster, a Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39 red grape, uh, OP39 red grape. I love this watch, very cool color um, that I've taken a liking to and I tend to wear every day. So Gerald Genta, who is he? What watches has he designed? So Gerald Genta is an icon in the watch industry. Gerald Genta has designed watches for Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe, Omega, IWC, Universal Genève, and so many others. So first, let's examine kind of where he got started. Gerald Genta, the watch designer, first was tasked with creating a watch for Universal Genève, and this is the pole router. This watch has become famous for its micro rotor architecture, which makes watch savants and geeks like myself very interested in this piece because it's something unique and different more so than a rotor that covers the majority of the actual movement. As well, this watch has a lot of clean and yet somehow sophisticated styling, so it has a lot of appeal um, to those that like the aesthetics of these types of vintage watch. And this vintage watch, now vintage, but originally was created to commemorate the historic Scandinavian Airlines flight between LA and Denmark that traveled over the North Pole. Hence, this is the Pole Router name. From there, it became a standard production watch, and even until today, vintage watch collectors flocked to this watch and the versions of it that came out thereafter. This is a watch that not only set off Gerald Genta's career, but also has become iconic in its own regard today. Now from there, Omega actually brought in Gerald Genta and they wanted to revitalize their Constellation lineup and they wanted to modernize it, bring it into the times. Of course, we're talking decades ago, but at that time they wanted to modernize it. And so what Genta did is he came up with this integrated bracelet style, which you know, wasn't the most novel thing, but today it's become almost called the Genta-esque design because of this integrated bracelet. So we see it in a constellation like this, and that really catapulted Genta into the watchmaking greats and the companies that we'll talk about next that he created designs for because of this integrated style that created something in the 70s that was considered modern. And we'll talk about this particular watch, which I'm sure you'll all recognize. It's going to be the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. And Genta was tasked by AP to create a sports watch in a design that had never been done before. They wanted something unique, and he certainly delivered. Overnight, he designed this watch, or at least it's rumored, and he created the Royal Oak, which was modeled after a diving helmet, a vintage diving helmet. And the way that these helmets are created is much like the Royal Oak in that there are separate pieces together held by screws. And those are the screws that you see through the bezel of the watch. And with, Vin with, uh, with the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, the case back just doesn't open like you would see uh, on a normal watch. It actually, to service the movement, the entire watch needs to be deconstructed because of how the metal is pressed together and held into place by these 
screws. So that was the unique design and it just exploded. AP was so happy and executives in the industry took notice. And from there, Patek Philippe just had to have one of his designs and they brought him in and he was tasked here with creating a sports watch in response to the Royal Oak. And of course, we see another icon. This is going to be the Patek Philippe Nautilus line. We all know the Nautilus. We talk about it all the time. It is quintessential integrated sports watch. And here, he actually designed the watch to look like the portholes in the ship. So once again, the integrated bracelet style, more integrated than others in the past, but the integrated bracelet style with that nautical or aquatic theme portholes in ships. And in my opinion, it looks a lot like that. Maybe it's become a little bit more removed as Patek Philippe has uh, changed and adapted the stylings, but the underlying foundation is there. And it's kind of interesting because once again, it is rumored um, or so, so the story tells that Genta created this design overnight again, though this time on a napkin. So it's kind of funny uh, to just imagine this iconic designer today just spitting out these designs overnight for a quickly changing watch industry that'd be, that, that would be facing the quartz crisis, uh, but just pumping these things out on napkins uh, now becoming all iconic watches in their own regard. And while Genta has designed so many other watches, the last watch I'll really focus on is going to be the IWC Ingenieur. And once again, we have an integrated bracelet, a porthole looking or a nautical design. The interesting thing is the difference with this IWC Ingenieur is in the name itself. This is an engineer's or uh, a scientific focused watch. This is going to be something uh, that I guess you could have said would, would be competing with the, the Rolex Milgausses of the world, things like that, because of the extra magnetic field resistance. Watches uh, previously with the construction were ultra susceptible. They still are, but to a degree, but they are susceptible to magnetic fields. So if you're working with precision instruments, especially before these instruments became, a lot of them digital, but if you were working with this, there were oftentimes many magnets, very strong, powerful magnets, and you needed the watch to withstand the extra Gauss rating. And that's why we have the IWC Ingenieur, one of my personal favorite watches that Genta actually has designed. Very cool, and I like that scientific touch. And once again, there are so many other designs. We have the Cartier Pasha that he created. We have the Disney watches that have become ultra desirable and collectible, which you can see on my Instagram as well, the real John P. And he's also given credit for including different retrograde complications as well as jump complications into the watches and the mixture of these complications that create a fun and quirky looking watch, sometimes chunky designs and oftentimes futuristic designs, even though uh, some of the names are called retro, they were very futuristic designs. And that's something that many people are drawn to the Gerald Genta specific branded watches for. From there, you know, Gerald Genta did, did you know, carry out his life. He came out with a brand, uh, Gerald Charles, and now there is a version of that brand Today, uh, unfortunately, he has since passed, but Bulgari does own the rights to the Gerald Genta name and the design, and Bulgari has been showing us in recent times that they intend on doubling down on this, likely in response to just the demand that they are receiving from watch collectors for Gerald Genta. Now, I want to talk about the market conditions and why you should put one of these watches in your collection today if you'd like one or else I think you might be sorry because likely these watches are going to continue to climb in price and desirability. The first reason is going to be that there are just more and more watch collectors every day. Watch collecting 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I you know, first got started, it was kind of an underground thing. Yes, sure, they had watches at authorized dealers and things like that, but vintage wasn't that hot um, the, these more collectible watches, unique watches, they, they just weren't that hot. You'd have to go on places like Time Zone and eventually Watch You Seek and some of the other watch forums, and that would be the only place where you can talk about this. Now you have Red Bar, all these other meetups, and endless and countless amounts of blogs and podcasts and writings and literature. You name it, everything about watches is out there, and that's increasing every day. Every day there's a new watch YouTuber. Every day there's a new uh, watch blog. Shout out to Rescapement. Um, really like what they're doing, Tony out there. But every day there's more of this. So when I look at this as someone that's a trader, a collector, and oftentimes holds pieces long term, uh, just for fun, right? But I'm a watch dealer at the end of the day. I see the demand only going up, right? There's not more of these Gerald Genta watches. 
I'm not talking about the watches from the brands that he designed, though those are also going up with the rest of the watch market, mostly because they're iconic. But the brand Gerald Genta, the Gerald Genta brand, the, the branded watch of Gerald Genta with the, um, the retrogrades and all the other jump hour functions, as well as the Mickey Mouse, the retro series, these watches, in my mind, just have to go up because there's more watch collectors and the watch collectors that already existed are starting to catch on. They're starting to catch on by videos and blogs. And you know, recently, I think uh, Gerald Genta's daughter and perhaps even um, wife were on you know, a podcast or a video or something like that, I can't remember. But Gerald Genta, once again, is being pushed by Bulgari as well. So when you mix all of that together and then you see the watch market and collectors start buying more watches, I can only see the numbers on these going up. But it's not only based on the price. Let's say you want one of these watches and the price isn't the big issue, it's just uh, you're a little bit busy. The market's also drying up. When we talk about watches that are desirable, we have Rolex Submariner, we have Rolex Daytona, we have watches, uh, we have Patek Philippe uh, watches as well. Let's not forget that, the Aquanauts and Nautiluses. Uh, the 5711 is discontinued, they'll come out with another Nautilus, but all of those other watches I mentioned, they are producing more of these every day. The Gerald Gento watches, with the exception of the newer kind of Bulgari offshoot, which is yet to really be defined and see what they're going to do with Gerald Genta. But all these Gerald Gento watches that are out there, they're not making any more of them. And so people will add them to the collection, they'll buy them up, maybe they'll get sick of them, but I think it's kind of unlikely because these watches are not commodity-based watches. It's not like an Omega Seamaster or a Submariner du Jour. These watches are unique and special, and there's not more of them floating around. So in my mind, it creates the perfect scenario for a watch to only go up, only become more desirable, only become more collectible, and less of them be available on the market. I can share with you, when I first started getting into watch collecting, I would hit all the forums, respond, I would do all of that, um, I would chat with people. I would. That was the only place you could talk about watches before everything else came out. I mean, this was pre-YouTube even. Um, so people would go on Time Zone and they talk about the Gerald Gentle watches. And I mean, these watches would maybe trade at like 700 US dollars, you know, 10, 12 years ago. Now we're talking about some Gerald Gentle watches, like the Mickey wa uh, Mickey Mouse watches, trading at m maybe 25,000 US dollars plus. If there is one on the market, and if there's not, they don't even exist. So. I'm giving you a most extreme example, but let's look at something like a, um, a Gerald Genta Night Day, for example. Very beautiful watch that you see floating around out there. They do exist. Now the market price is maybe $2,500 or $3,000. Let's talk even three years ago, this was a $1,000 watch. And so in the last few years, Genta has just exploded. So I wanted to share this with you because I truly do believe that Gerald Genta watches mark a very significant, not only time, but also interesting piece of horological history and with it i think these watches can only go up in desirability and value and so if you are on the fence and i'm asked this question quite frequently now actually about joe genta and the watches um, if you're on the fence i would recommend pulling the trigger before it's too late because in my opinion once again these can only go up across the board every factor every function. What do you guys think about Gerald Genta watches? Do any of you have them in your collection? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Are they too quirky? Are they not quirky enough? I'd love to hear it and see it in the comments below. Thanks guys. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.